And joining me now for further analysis on those market moves is Imtiaz Suleiman from Sencho Capital. Thank you so much for your time, uh, Imtiaz. I'm quite surprising seeing uh, markets trading in the green today after the spooking uh, that we saw uh, last week uh, due to the non-farm payrolls for August where we saw growth coming in below uh, expectations. Uh, is it just uh, maybe bargain hunters uh, coming uh, to the fore? <laughs> Yeah, thanks, Anati. I think we saw quite a terrible week last week, especially out of U.S. markets. And that was really, as you mentioned, on the back of the jobs numbers. So the market is really trying to ascertain whether the labor market is falling off a cliff and has the Fed been too late in terms of cutting interest rates. You know, we will get the interest rate out of the Fed next week, Wednesday and expectations are you know between a 25 basis point cut and a 50 basis point cut so i think that's clearly on the cards that rates are starting to or will start to decline um you know does the fed move ahead of the curve and cut by 50 remains to be seen there's still the inflation numbers that need to come out and that will steer the fed in some way so i think the market is grappling between the labor market that is softening, mm. but inflation that has also come down, but not yet at that 2% level that the Fed is targeting. Well, talking about inflation, we do expect consumer inflation out of the U.S. this week. But China's inflation picture looking uh, quite different there. We did see a uh, growth uh, in uh, the consumer inflation printer for August, but it did surprise to the downside. Still no relief there from the consumer? Yeah, China's been in sort of a deflationary spiral now for over a year. And it just shows how weak consumer confidence is. A lot of the consumer wealth in China is tied towards property prices in uh, property values in particular and property prices have come down. So that's affecting consumer confidence which in turn is putting pressure on the consumer price index and we're seeing that come through. The Chinese government has not been uh, willing to stimulate the economy en masse. They've been very targeted in how they stimulate the economy because they essentially don't want to create another property bubble or credit bubble. And we're seeing that play out. So. It's, it, the, the data out of China is mm. certainly very weak. Ah, all right. Well, uh, something that's not weak, uh, some of the results that we've gotten out of the JSC today. Let's start off with Sun International. They're releasing interim results. Uh, the, uh, we saw growth there from the top to the bottom line. Uh, adjusted headline earnings per share up 9.1%. Of course, investors rewarding that stock there. Last time I checked, it climbed uh, more than uh, 4%. Uh, has uh, Sun International proven to be quite defensive, even with the economic pressures that we're seeing? Yeah, I think you're seeing a recovery come through. We saw the hospitality side up 12%, which was a good result. Um, and then the physical um, casinos were weak at around 3%. But the online gaming is 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 performing quite strongly. You know, that was up 71%. And I think that shift that we've seen towards online um, gambling has continued. Um, they do own Sunbet, which is a big player in that space. Um, and I think from since COVID, you know, you know, online gambling has really taken off, which is uh, coming through in the numbers. Ah, all right. Uh, something else that's also coming through is growth for AVI. Uh, they released a year-end results there. Uh, top line growth, 6%. Uh, bottom line, uh, they're increasing at more than 24%, declaring a special dividend. Uh, is this an investor's dream? <coughs> Yeah, I think AVI is certainly a company that is has proven itself in the past in terms of rewarding shareholders, but also being very good allocators of capital. They invest quite smartly in terms of making sure that their production processes are up to date and that lowers the cost of production, which showed in this result and their margin did increase on the back of that. Um, if we look at the likes of Entice, which is the beverage division, your revenue was up 18%, margins increased as well. Snack Works, you know, which includes the like, uh, likes of Baker's Biscuits, that was up 6%. The two divisions that weren't as good was INJ. And INJ is very much dependent on catch rates. Mm -hmm. And it's been a bit of a choppy environment for um, catch rates in general. Uh, and then you've got the fashion brands business, which is 
squarely in the discretionary income bucket. And we saw that come under some pressure. But overall, you know, the company produced um, a good set of results. And again, that special dividend is a welcome uh, for investors. Uh, something else that you are welcoming, uh, your stock pick uh, quickly, MTRs for today. Yeah, I'm going with Qualcomm. Qualcomm is a strong player in the chip uh, making segment. So they produce a lot of chips for the smartphones. They've got quite a competitive advantage in 5G technology and licensing. licensing. They um, enjoy um, licensing revenue, which comes at higher margins. And I think they're well positioned to benefit from the move towards smartphones, the internet of things, um, self-driving cars, and essentially, you know, future technology. So they earn very good um, revenues and their margins are also in double digits. They do pay back um, some of that in terms of dividends and share buybacks. So I think they're well positioned for uh, the future of, um, you know, technology in particular and smartphones. All right. Well, thank you so much for your time and giving us insights on it. Has moved investors' money today. MTS. That was MTS Suleiman from Sentio Capital.